Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI, where we are doing a naval game. And we're going to be adding a couple of mods to this game as well, actually. Most notably, Sucretax Oceans, that I have done a uh, mod spotlight on. But we're also going to be adding this mod, the More Maritime Seaside Sectors mod. Uh, this does some pretty cool things. It adds two new districts, the Arsenal District and the Waterfront District, and there's five buildings in these districts that is added. Uh, there was a design doc here. So the Waterfront District focuses on food and growth, uh, the Arsenal District focuses on military and production, and then the Harbour focuses on gold and trade. So the Arsenal unlocks shipbuilding, uh, plus one production, plus two foods. Okay, cool. So this is like, you know, there's a whole bunch of like cool stuff in here that you could fool about with that we're going to check out. Hopefully these mods play nice together. So I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to it and then uh, look to activate it in the Maya game. We'll add Sucretax Oceans. Boosh. Do I have to? Ah, there it is. More maritime seaside sectors. Boosh. We'll add it. Single player. Create game. So we're going to be doing a big ass naval game. So probably got to be doing like at least eight players on this map. Now, which naval sieve do you guys want me to play or do you want me to? Here's what we could do. We could put all of the naval sieves into a pool and then randomly select from that pool. I think that would be a pretty cool idea. So I'm going to go through and look for every sieve that I consider a naval sieve. I'm going to add them. So Dido for sure. Frederick could potentially be considered a naval sieve too. They got U-boats. I mean, that's, I mean, I feel like having a unique naval unit at least makes you viable on a naval map. Let's add Gitarja. I feel like Japan also is a naval sieve because they have that divine wind that gives them extra power on the coastline. So Japan for sure. Portugal, definitely. Australia also, uh, also a, a coastal slash naval sieve in my opinion. Because their, uh, what's the word? Their districts get improvements on high appeal tiles. Coastline tends to have high appeal. Coupe, for sure, got to be added. Eh, I feel like Spain is also a bit of like a naval sieve. The Ottomans have a naval unique unit. So for the same reason as like Germany, I'll add them to the game. The Dutch, definitely a naval sieve. Victoria, definitely a naval sieve. Because um, they got that Royal Navy dockyard. Who else do I think is, is justified here? Maybe the Eleanor version of England? I feel like if I'm going to have... If I'm going to have an England, it's going to be the Victoria version of England. Oh, yeah, I should probably add Pedro, right? Because he's got he's got a unique unit, too. Did I miss Norway? Oh, I missed Harold. Yeah, he's definitely in this game. The, Byz the Byzantines have the Dromon. That's a unique naval unit. Does what anyone with some kind of naval bonus is in? I don't think the Vietnamese are naval, actually. Am I missing anyone? I think that's all the naval civs. So we'll okay that. There's 14 leaders in this custom pool. Uh, the largest map only goes to 12 players, but we're going to play on the largest map and add two extra players. This is going to be a giga huge naval game, okay? A naval game, the likes of which has never been seen before. Now we have the app option here to completely randomize every sieve. What do you guys think? Or should I pick one from the pool? Now we're going to be playing an archipelago today. Boosh. Uh, deity difficulty for sure. And we'll also slap in a nice high sea level for that high quality coastline. I should, I definitely feel like I should go through and select only the, the naval wonders too. Like just disable everything that isn't like a naval wonder. I mean, that's still eight natural wonders for a huge map. Yeah, on a huge map, you only get seven wonders. So being able to see, so having eight in the pool is like a perfect amount. Huggled off Dead Sea. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Dead Sea, technically, kind of navally wonder. It appears as a lake, though. It's a sea. It's a sea. Two more AIs. We've already added. We've already got 14 AIs in. Do I want to select my city-states? Yeah, I think I will. I think I will select my city-states here. I'm going to go through and make sure there's naval city-states here. Naval and trading city-states are what I'm down for. Adjacent to coast, so... Kumasi, Rapa Nui, Nan Madal. Kagwana does not make the cut. Ayuthia, I think Mahanj, these four make the cut. Cardiff makes the cut. Brussels does not. Singapore and Auckland just make the cut. Otherwise, the others do not. Wolan makes the cut. Valletta, I think that... You know what? Valletta is on Malta, I think. So that makes the cut. And I think Lahore is also a coastal city. So that makes the cut. Colossal Heads make the cut. Candy makes the cut just because it'll make an interesting game. But all the natural wonders. Jerusalem is gone. Chinguetti is gone. The Vatican is gone. Yerevan is gone. Get out of here. I don't think any of the scientific city-states are like even remotely naval. So they're all gone. Van der Brunei is trade-based. 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 
I think I keep all the traitor ones, except maybe Samarkand. Samarkand can go. And Cahokia. The rest of them, you're okay. So that's 18 city-states that we have pre-selected. But I'm also going to put in the Barbarian Clans mode, just so we have a sprinkling of maybe a few different extra city-states in this map. Now, the real question is, what are the extra options that we choose? Valetic and Faith by Flood Barrier, so it's a naval city-state. I'll take that logic, dude. Are we just starting or redo? We're just starting. Um, okay. Do we want to add more game modes? I feel like Barbarian Clans mode is just basically a very, very slight upgrade to the gameplay. But maybe we want to do things like abundant or sparse. We could do sparse resources. I think I might, mm, I might play without, mo I might play without these modes. And we just, we just play with the Barbarian Clans and Sucretax Oceans and we leave it as is. We've got mods in the game. I think we just leave it. We just leave it. Play, play fairly vanilla. Fairly, 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 fairly vanilla. I think I'm going to do sparse resources, but then otherwise standard. Maybe like some wet rainfall. I guess it is, an, it is an archipelago world, so it would make sense that there's more rainfall. So that makes sense to me. I think that's everything, right? Huge. We picked our leader pool. We picked our city-state pool. We picked our natural wonders. Everything else is fairly standard. Slight modifications. Let's make sure we save this configuration. I'm going to turn down disaster intensity. I've kind of had a pain in my ass with disasters in the last few games. I'm going to save this as naval game. Boom. Let's get started. Click. Monopoly. Nah, I don't want to play with monopolies today. Before we go any further, I just want to say this video is brought to you by Prosperous Universe. Prosperous Universe is a player-driven economic MMO where you play as the CEO of your own spacefaring company in a massive, sprawling, persistent world. There are an endless amount of browser-based sci-fi strategy games with an emphasis on warfare, but Prosperous Universe is entirely a closed-loop economic simulation. All economic and political events in the game are purely player-driven. Players choose what goods to produce, how to produce them, where to ship them, what price to sell them at, and all of the products and raw materials are traded to and from other players. Now, I don't know about you, but this is the exact kind of game that I would have woken up before school to check my company and then spent the entire day in school thinking about my production lines and where I was going to ship my materials. It's super addictive, it's super fun, and it's free to try out if you check the link in the description. There's no microtransactions, there's no pay to win, there's only a premium license that unlocks some of the features of the game that you don't have as a trial user, but it's completely free to try it out and see if you like it see if you like the raw economic brutality and grift that you'll have to encounter in a persistent player driven economy as i said check out the link below and see if you can find my company in game i've already gone bankrupt a couple of times uh, i'd have to start over <laughs> that's it for the sponsorship huge thanks to simulogix for sponsoring the video Australia? I feel like I've pl I've played Australia recently, haven't I? It's on Settler? No, it's not. I'm pretty sure I put it on Deity. You need 13 AIs, man, because you're also a player. I already added two extra AIs. I will show you this. Okay, guys, I already added. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 players. Oh, fireworks going off, my favorite. Uh, what do you guys think? I think Australia might be a little bit too easy here. This is like the, e this is the insta win. I think this is a reroll. We reroll this Civ. It's too strong. This Civ, it's like an incredible coastal Civ and it's too strong. It's not on settler difficulty. Okay, why can't I ban you? You're lucky that I couldn't ban you. It wouldn't work. Yields mod on? Yep, all my mods are on. What's the occasion for fireworks? Uh, I live in Ireland and it's October, so therefore fireworks. Welcome to the thinnest justification required ever to launch out fireworks. Remove Australia from the pool. Nah, Australia belongs in the pool, but I think, I think I'm going to restart. We're going to play a different Civ. We're going to reroll. I think Australia is too good, and I've played them too recently, like a Yogg's game or something. So we'll leave Australia by the wayside. Oh, I haven't played Brazil in a long time. My problem is, though, Brazil, it's kind of a, it's kind of a culture Civ. We've been doing a lot of culture games. We could play it differently though. We don't have to play it culturally. But Brazil is kind of cool. We could do a dom we could do a semi-domination Brazil game or a full domination Brazil game, especially because it's a coastal map. We could do the naval air strategy as Brazil. Naval air strategy as Brazil. Let me think about that one. Because hear me out. Oh, I did not spawn coastally at all. Well, I guess it's a huge map, so that's kind of expected. 
Did I even spawn near the north? No. Did I spawn near the south? No. I spawned in the middle of the map near Jungle. Well, settling in place here does seem to make sense to me. And we have really, really good campuses and holy sites and stuff if we choose to go for that. But let me have a think here. So the Minas Gerais is like unlocked super early. It's like over here or something, right? Yeah, nationalism. So we can do some crazy stuff with this if we choose. Now, it does require us to basically rush coal. All right, that's 17 techs. 17 techs in. And we will have to get some of the bottom of this tech tree. But it can be done. It can be done. All right, time to show the yields. And this is the moment that the people have been waiting for, okay? The moment. Oh, oh my God, I have the randomized yield mod plugged in. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Fucking Christ. I hope turning it off works. Please, please turning it off works, right? Turning it off works, right? Copka, copium. Oh no, have I just fucking burnt my run already? I did ask you about it before. You know what, Fabio V? I missed your message. Oh, it works. Okay, saved. Angel thump. Beautiful. We saved it. Um, where would I settle in this start location? Let's have a look. So it's actually, mm, there is a bit of a discussion to be had here. It's not so cut and dry. There are two places that I feel like I would settle in this start location. So uh, there are, in my opinion, there are th at least two places we would consider settling. So we could consider settling in place to work, uh, to instantaneously work the culture, okay? This would allow us to get up to code of laws a little bit faster, which would open up production. Uh, also potentially some of these other cards. So settling on the silk has a lot of its advantages. Moving down and right one tile would give us access to these two food, three, uh, two food, two production tiles, as well as this three food, two production tile. I could also, I don't think I ever moved north here. Even if theoretically that's a good spot, I for sure I'm putting a campus here early. It's a plus five campus. Jesus Christ, it's a plus five campus. I think I'm okay with settling on the silk. My one downside here is I can put a district here on this tile to uh, and not lose adjacency. It's a plus five campus. Fuck me. I think, I think I settled the silk here. The extra culture from settling on the silk will allow my borders to grow to these tiles anyway, which is pretty based. Move warrior north first. My warrior's already moved. So he started out on the campus tile. So I'm thinking settling on silk is the move here. Plantations aren't really good enough to justify moving off of this to like reclaim the tile. Can't you keep the plus five if you settle in place and the commercial hub? Yeah, you can. This, this mod takes into account that. Like uh, here, if I place a campus here, and then I put a district there, and then a district there, plus four, a district there, a delete one, delete one. It, it takes that into account, this mod does. So I'm, I'm tempted to move down to the right here so that I could work a two food, two production tile instantly. However, um, there is something to be said for not doing that because I am going to have the plus one culture from the silk, which means my borders will grow faster naturally. I'll be able to get more gold to buy these tiles by selling the silk to the first AI I find. And I, um, now the, the one problem I have here is that in order for me to place this campus, I have to pick up bronze working, which will require me to go mining Kill three barbarians, because otherwise I'm never going to get the science in time. Kill three barbarians, and yeah, so maybe maybe the campus is better off being moved. Like there's a plus three there, plus three there, plus three there. I think I want to avoid the volcano, even though I'm on low disaster intensity. So having thought about all my options here, I think settling the silk is the move. Yeah, I feel like I feel like settling the silk is the strong play, so we're going to settle the silk. How did I find Spain already? Oh my god. What? He started right beside me, dude. That's not good. That's that's a slinger start if I ever saw one. Jesus Christ. Hey, Spain. You wanna, wanna buy my silk? You wanna be friends? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Is this a dead run? Oh, no, dude. All right, let's see how bad it'll be. Denounces you. Every time I spawn near Spain in my games, dude. Every time. Ottomans, pleasure to meet you. Oh God, dude, there's no room. Can can Spain even settle? They have settled. All right, I'm gonna sell the Ottomans my silk. One gold per turn. You know what? That's a 20% increase in my gold per turn. Well, uh, at least I have a really strong mountain pass to guard. All right. The one city challenge, I guess, has begun. <laughs> Retreat. 
Let's just park that warrior there. We do have the bananas now. That's good news. We almost have our slinger. You're staying there. Ankara. Slinger is in play. Oh. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. What do I do? Do I go monument? I guess I have the culture already. I need to save money to buy units. Warrior, it is. Being denounced, based. Code of laws. Uh, it would be nice to get a pantheon here. Plus one production will be good. Let's go for God King. Discipline. We might be able to conduct a very early war here, actually. Oh. We could go for a warrior rush on, on the Ottomans. Yeah. Oh my god, that's actually such a huge plan. Stray for archers. We go we just go rush. We rush him down. We have the culture to potentially beat him to Agage. Two cities within loyalty range that we can knock down. Bang, bang, bang. Dude, yes. We are going for the fast war. You, like, you want to live in harmony, Ottomans. You literally just denounced me, okay? I apologize to all my Turkish fans for what I'm about to do to, do to, to the Ottomans. Preemptively. Uh, I definitely feel like my gold is well used. A for scouting and B for a 2-2 tile. Wait. Archery. He must not have room with that settler. Um, trying to get that military score up. Oh, he's coming. I mean, I'm okay if he declares war on me. What's next? More warriors. I think we just spam warriors. I think we try and get this warrior into a more favorable position for offense, which is on this tile. Now, if he declares war on me, that's a sacrificial warrior, but still, that doesn't bother me. He's spamming warriors right now. I don't think I care about Pantheon anymore. Well, maybe I do. Pantheon is still based. We rush it straight for military tradition for flanking and support combat bonuses. Makes fighting early war way easier. Did I forget? I forgot to plug in a GOG. Yeah, well, it happens. How many warriors do I need? I think I need one more warrior, then I can declare war. Oh yeah, build that wonder for me. I think I just spam warriors until I have archery, and then I spam archers. My units are merely passing by, Ottomans. Cliffs of Dover. Oh my god. And Singapore? This map is crammed, dude. There's another player? <laughs> oh my god, is that Canada or something? Whose colors are that? Your little galley. Loyalty. Uh-oh. Okay, we need to go. <laughs> Gas is belly. Formal war. So we're going to let him hit our fortified units for a while. My fortified units will have higher combat strength and they will heal. Spamming out warriors. Yeah, this is what I'm hoping for. He'll attack me. I'll get levels. You can step forward. Not sure if I'm ready to step forward with you. They forded. Taking damage. Good, good, good. I'll swap you out soon. I've already got mercenaries on boosted. Right, now I'm feeling a little bit more confident to attack forward a bit maybe. Uh, maybe next turn. How much is it for an archer to upgrade? I think it's 80 gold, so I can get a slinger right now. I don't think I want to waste health. Yeah, baby. Attack me. Thank you, Ottoman. Ottoman AI. You kill there. You go back to heal. You come forward. You delete this, bro. Step forward. Step forward. Ankara will be mine. Loyalty, 35 turns. We're running out of time. Oh, Jesus. Christ. Now we could take Fishboat Pantheon. This is a naval map, so Fishboat Pantheon is pretty based. Also, where's my Thunderdome? Wait. Oh, it looks like got a, the, the one that gives you production towards ancient era units is already taken. Ah, uh, let's see. God of War. Let's do it. Let's get our faith from combat, I think. I assume somebody around here is building holy sites. Spain for sure will build holy sites. Oh my god, the city's combat strength from the galley. I may have to just skip this and go for Istanbul. Jesus. How much combat strength does a galley have? 30? Why are they 30? What the hell? Oh my god. All right, we'll just take... Well, we can pepper that city with archers. What pantheon do I take here? Jesus. Attack Istanbul, wait for the galley to leave. I literally already said that that was my plan. Eh, I'm going to take God of the Sea. It's the boring one, but it's the best one for a naval map. Don't even at me, okay? Don't even at me in the comments. You're not welcome. What is this that he's building? Campus. Oh, he actually built it somewhere relatively good for me. That's a plus four campus for me in theory. Yeah, we're going to Istanbul. Never mind this city. Can we get this kill? Boom. Archery boosted. Wait, what the fuck did I just do? Delete my own? Did I just delete my own production there? Oh my god. I'm, I'm just gonna undo whatever it is I just did there to, to delete my own production. Whatever I just did, I'm undoing it because that looked like a bug to me. <laughs> that looked like some bullshit. I was one turn from that slinger, okay? All right, kill there, boom. There's archery. I'm just not gonna touch the production queue in that city. 
I'm going to assume all is well. Now that we have archery, I think our natural follow-up is uh, probably campus tech. I don't know why this guy is bravely building a campus as I invade him. It's a ballsy play. Oh, he levied the city-state. It looks like Bandar Brunei is on his side. Eh, you fortify. Swap. Promote. Heal. Fortify. Cross. Come forward. Let's see what the AI does. We killed one of his warriors. Perfect. We'll retreat back and heal with you. We have to send new units here in the new, near future. Now, this is where things get a little dicey for me. A lot of enemy stuff. Taking some time to heal my boys. All right, this guy has a promotion, which is good. Boom. Battle cry. We've got a train of archers coming. And we'll have some fresh warriors for the front line. We're fortified. I reckon we, we play the fortification game a little bit harder. My god. Dude, I just killed three units with this warrior by defending. Nope. Yep. Good shit, good shit. Minor defeats. Oh god, I've got 19 turns. <laughs> I've got 19 turns. I need loyalty cards in the house. Oh god. Well, I do have, I have military tradition next turn, which is perfect. He wants peace. I need to kill him. Hi, Dido. <laughs> oh god, this is like an awful start. All right, maneuver, military. Uh, so you have a promotion. I do feel like plus one, co the extra combat strength is worth. You stay fortified there. It's your only saving grace. We will kill in future. Uh, for a trade, Bane declares war soon, probably. Understandable. Uh, I think we, I think we shoot here. You shoot here, you stay fortified. You attack and kill. You come forward, you come forward. The guy left this city, but it's not safe to attack it. What we can do, 47 turns, we got time. You're about to get a level, you're not. Stay fortified, hopefully your combat strength gives you the advantage. Man! That's some BS right there. Cross the river, come forward. Attack the city for a level. Shoot, shoot. I don't even know if we can do this. All right, we're officially out of gold, which means Monument Granary. This is the army that we have. Woo! Killing units is more important than attacking cities. What we do is we need to get that city surrounded. 13 turns. Oh, Christ. Chariots. Not good. I don't know how I could have played this differently. Yeah, the galley left, but my army isn't in position to attack Ankara anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter that the galley left. I not in position to to do the thing that I was supposed to do in Ankara. I have to go for Istanbul instead. And I can't put enough damage on this city. These crappy units. Let's find out. Can I just throw my army at this city and win? My city is flipping independent. I don't have any other choice. Probably was a mistake to do what I just did. Because now I don't have a now I don't have a surround on this city. I think this run is just dead, dude. This is just like surrounded by four people. I think this run is dead, but we made the attempt. And I think the attempt can be respected. I don't think, I think just the unfortunate of him getting it, I feel like this would have worked if he didn't have the galley uh, or if the galley had left and I actually maybe persisted. I think that the fact that he got it, at, like that he got chariots out, eh, I just don't know. It was a really cool potential game, but we just got boxed in and that's it. We re-rolling. Re-roll. Oh, look at the map. Oh, good call. Good call. Wait. I re-rolled Brazil? What? What are the... I have never, ever re-rolled the same save twice in a row. That is insane. That is ridiculous. I've never seen anything like that. Now, this has potential as a start location. We will talk about this in a moment. However, what I would like to do is... Uh, this is my B game. I actually want to reload that game and have a look at the... Uh, I want to have a look at the map. Culture on a desert tile? It's probably from a resource nearby. We'll double check, though. Uh, there's the fire tuner. So this was the map I spawned on. I couldn't have spawned on this island near this. I spawned here. Oh my, look at this. This is rigged, dude. I couldn't have spawned in Tundra. I guess I have jungle bias, right? Yeah. Like I couldn't have spawned here. Look how based this start location is, dude. Oh my God. Imagine. Imagine if I started up with Giant's Causeway. Mary's all the way over here. Look what could have been. There's so many places I could have spawned that would have been awesome. And I just didn't. I got I got absolutely lashed in between four sieves and multiple city-states. Anyway. Sorry, yeah, random yields are on. It didn't look like it, but we'll see. Crowded with naval map plus extra sieves. I mean, it is to be expected. Sure, fair enough. Okay, somebody said culture on a desert tile. There's no culture on this desert tile, so I don't know what they're talking about. 
Uh, very confused about that. Uh, what we do have here, though, is an absolute bangers and mash starting location here. We have so much potential. We've got three fishing resources within range of our capital. We've got deer, we've got furs, potential camp pantheon, potential fish boat pantheon. We've also got jade, a mining resource on a flatland tile. We could potentially, if we were feeling a little bit frisky, settle on the jade. Now, settling on the jade while cool, giving us plus one to our culture, is probably not the move because it has no good workable tiles aside from this, this juicy reef right here. Um, I think we do want to explore. I've got a decent mountain range, not much jungle. I saw the culture too. Eh. Who knows, maybe the random yields turned on for a split second. They're not on though. I don't even know how Morbus is going to figure out how to edit this all together into a cohesive video for YouTube. But man, we're having a great time anyway. Um, so in terms of start location, I do feel like in place is probably my best place. It's the only freshwater tile I have that's also coastal. Now, I'll, I could move off of coast. Uh, there is some semblance of like one of these. Uh, yeah, I feel like a plus three campus. Not bad. I could pick up a plus three in here. Plus three is pretty acceptable. If I really wanted to, I could maybe do this and then like, you know, like some kind of district here. Uh, if I really wanted to do weird stuff, I could, uh, I could do like a government plaza and then like a campus and then like a campus and then like a campus, go for like some sort of scientific play, depending on how the rest of my land shakes out. Uh, and then just put some kind of extra district here to complete the trifecta. Probably if I was going to do that, I would put a Diplo quarter there. There are relatively good city-states here. If you settle the Jade, what about a campus industrial zone and an aqueduct play? It's too slow. It's too slow. It's a good idea. It's a really cool idea if I, if, if it was, if it wasn't my capital city, your capital city has to be good. And unfortunately settling Jade and then aqueducting and doing all sorts of industrial zone plays just isn't very good. But I think this here kind of looks like an interesting play um, in terms of long term. The, the problem is though, these two districts are like really hard to desire. I definitely feel like this is a reasonable play. Government Plaza Campus uh, Harbor. This feels like a pretty reasonable play. Gets me some adjacency. Things look okay. I don't see any arguments for moving. Maybe we could gamble on the river to the north, but the tiles around here are relatively good. We have good fish. We have good campuses. We don't have very good jungle, which is usually what you look for as uh, Pedro. Now, if we wanted to do like some absolutely Dumbo brain plays like the appeal in here. I know that's a dumb play. I shouldn't, I shouldn't put a preserve here. No, that's a terrible, terrible move, right? Government Plaza, campus, three campuses feels like a solid number. This feels like the best play I have. What about the mod districts? Oh shit, you're right. The arsenal, a district for naval military, can it be adjacent to a city center? Must be built a coast or lake. This is a place that the coastal tile increases growth and housing. Plus one amenities, if adjacent to the city center, can it be built on reef? Ooh. Plus two food for each adjacent city center, plus two food from each adjacent harbor. Oh. Ooh. What if I were to put my city center here? Now that may actually long term change the play. Now we're cooking with gash. Is the waterfront a unique district though? That's the thing. What does the waterfront do? Okay, the first building. Oh, no, no. The first building in the waterfront district is the breakwater. Plus one food on all coast tiles for the city. Plus one science for all reef features in the city. Ooh, that seems pretty based. And it unlocks something. Does the campus still get adjacency from reefs? You know what? That's actually a pretty damn good point. That's a plus five campus right there. Uh, yeah, good point. Good point, person who spoke up there. Shit, am I gonna go coastal this game? Am I actually gonna settle this terrible jade tile for this incredible based coastal empire? Oh no, I think I'm gonna do it. It's terrible. I shouldn't, but I will. Well, so what What? What does Harbor give me now in this mod? Lighthouse, lighthouse gives you gold on fishing boats. How do I get the waterfront? Naval tradition all the way over here. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of tempted to do this kind of weird play. Growth will be rough early. It will be really, really rough early. We do have the reef tile to work until we get access to the deer. This is looking more like a weird vi viable play. What's in the Arsenal District? The Arsenal District uh, removes movement penalty. So it works like a harbor. It's just like a battle harbor. So the warehouse, 
It's just a barracks. It's just a coastal barracks. Naval Academy. Cool. Yeah. Plus one production for all unapproved coast tiles in the city. Add additional plus one production if adjacent to the arsenal. Ooh. Okay. So the arsenal actually is pretty bangers. Like arsenal here boosts these tiles. Should you not swap harbor and waterfront? Uh, I don't know if that really makes a difference, does it? Oh, I guess this goes up to plus six. What's the waterfront do again? Ah, uh, yeah, I wanted to put the waterfront away from the city because it gives plus one culture and plus one faith on all adjacent tiles, right? So here, it would just be like a bit of a douche. Like a, uh, I guess this hits three tiles, whereas here, it still hit, this would hit four tiles. I think the, wa like, I would rather, ooh, what does the shipyard do now? That's the real question. <laughs> I lose plus one adjacency. So I lose one adjacency on my harbor, but I get more tiles affected by this. Could go MOS with harbor near land. I feel like we, we lean into the meme. It's too fun not to. Harbor next to Riverside Commercial Hub. That's too many districts. Three districts? Only ever plan three districts. Because it's hard to get more than that and actually adequately build them, especially in a coastal city. Planning out three districts is totally reasonable. Before is you're asking for trouble because then you got to get the 10 population and then you got to build a four district. Um, but I think this is actually a reasonable plan. Now, commercial hub. Now, if I were to do that, if I was playing with the secret society mode, I would possibly consider this. It still only gets me to five, but this feels unnecessary. I would put something else there. I think I'm going to I'm going to move to the jade. I'm going to do it. This is a terrible play, but I'm going to do it objectively awful. OK, I want you all to know that. But it's also exactly what I'm doing. You could potentially do mausoleum and stuff, but... All right, let's talk about Rio. If we are on a large island, we are almost certainly not alone. That's the thing. So the best unit to go for early is whatever lines up with my growth. So eight turns. So a slinger would protect me and maybe let me get a settler. I think we go for sailing. Prospectively, a builder. Improve the fish. Grow really big. We scout out. We found Kumasi. We were the far first to find Kumasi. Kumasi is good. That's extra culture. Means we'll hit code of law sooner. Good. Good. We found the Great Barrier Reef. We're not going to be able to settle it. Oh, we can settle bananas. We are definitely settling bananas. And we are definitely, definitely putting a campus right there. Okay. Things are shaping up. Boy, do I want to just put the campus right there. That's a plus five campus right there. Oh, my God. Jesus. Does that make me... Does, oh, my God. The campus potential of this empire is actually disgusting. Why? Why are you here? Who asked? Now I now there's no point me going for sailing if I'm not going to build galleys. Oh my god. Who actually asked? Okay, he left. I don't think I want to go for a science victory. I think I'd like to do some kind of like science-based play, like a naval dom game. I uh, definitely want faith. Definitely want discipline to fight barbs. Definitely want to pick up, I reckon, foreign trade. Go for a fast trader. Trade with Kamasi. Build up my relationship. What do they want? No, they want a great rider. Maybe that's not the play. Maybe the play is craftsmanship. Although early empire play could be the play. Tribal village. That's good. Scout. We're scouting. Uh, so this is where we get a bit of a fork in our road. Now, we know we definitely don't... I wanted to go builder to improve tiles, um, coastal tiles, but that's not going to happen because there's galleys running around, so I have to build galleys before I can do that. So that kind of knocks builder out of my build order here. Now, we can either go settler or we can go monument. Monument would let me get to early empire faster as well as my battleship faster. So in theory, that is a sick as hell play, right? We go monument. We get to all the stuff we want sooner. I probably would put both my campus next to this um, Great Barrier Reef because then I can just put another district here and like complete the trifecta. Slinger, Monument, Settler. I feel like the play here is I go Monument and burn my way to Early Empire fast. Is that the play? Settler's just better. Settler's just better. Then I can go double Monument. Settler's just better. I have no growth. Well, I'm not alone if you count Mahanjadaro. Uh-oh, Mohanjadaro has met another sieve. Oh, you've still got 15 seconds left on your predict. Now, it could be a coastal sieve. It's foreign trade. Can maybe fit two more cities here. I'm going to use my massive, massive, huge economy and uh, buy this two food, two production tile. Okay, we have access to sailing. I definitely feel like we rush riding. Oh, it is Japan. We are not alone. Although, we haven't yet seen one of the cities. Okay, we're not alone. It's over. Choose prediction outcome. We're not alone. All right, so not alone one. Well, I definitely need to park this guy here to prevent this settle location from being taken from me. I can get three cities, and I think that's a reasonable number. 
I love gambling with things that don't matter. I agree. I think gambling over stuff that doesn't matter or with stuff that doesn't matter. Like gambling, you know, in a board game is great. But I feel like gambling with real money is kind of unbased and degenerate. That's my take. Um, I will soon have enough money. Japan, would you like to buy? Yes. Buy my jade. Four gold per turn. It's beautiful. I don't know if you are a chunky lover or like you love chunky. So, you know, bit of a question mark right there, buddy. See, gambling is fun when the outcome doesn't like destroy your life. That's when gambling is fun. Any other scenario, it's just degenerate. I need to get this city settled early so it can grow. It's the only freshwater tile. Okay, actually, we have a pretty solid mountain range here. We might be able to get five cities. Yeah. I think it's a city right there, uh, a city right there, a city right here. One, two, three. Yeah, I think we just rushed these out, right? We, uh, we maybe buy productive tiles. Oh, Indonesia. We were double not alone. Well, that complicates matters over here for me a little bit. That means I have to move this city to there. It also means I need to park my guy there to prevent this minus five loyalty. I will have a governor by the time he gets there. Yeah. I'll be able to governor that city. Uh, you know what else? It's going to be another settler for me, dog. If I get, okay, if I get in the next 15 minutes, if I get a Twitch primer per minute, we'll do it, okay? I'm at 67. So if you get it up to 82 in, fi in the next 15 minutes, we'll build the Venetian arsenal. We want to settle this one. We're blocking here. I don't even know where it is on this list. Oh, it must be adjacent to an arsenal. They changed it. We'll build it like here or something. Uh, so talking about what we do here, send a trade route, train a heavy chariot. I think we trader. If we go trader, we have the faith now. We could probably switch. Uh, right, what are we doing? In Salvador de Bahia. Oh yeah, I was meant to rename this to like propane or something. I need to build two or three Venetian arsenals. I, I don't know if that's going to work. I feel like I go trader here and then I can trade with my Hanjadaro and get an envoy with them and potentially get Susan to of them and that'll help me defend myself. <gasps> Okay, we did it. Trader feels like the move. Trader feels like the move. It opens up things. It's empire-wide infrastructure. It gives me a trade. It gives me a tech boost. What about... Yeah, Trader feels like the right move. It's a 12-turn build. Roads opens up technology. It opens up options. Trade routes open up options. They open up doorways. I need to actually, like, edit that potatoes thing because if that's going to happen that often, it needs to be, like, a little bit shorter. Yeah, we hit the, we hit the goal, like, four times, okay? All right. We have tech... Rebellion in six turns. Okay, good thing we can get a governor in here in a couple. Happiness level. I'll buy your lux. I need it to neutralize the happiness in here. Don't want to go Arsenal? I think we just rush harbors this game. Nice chill naval game. Uh, time to choose Pantheon. I do feel like production from fishing boats is just the obvious Pantheon here, right? For sure. Going for religion? Nah, I'm going to skip religion and go for harbors. You need to get religion for harbors, though. Like, it's part of the build path. All right. Uh, we have our Pantheon. We no longer need this. We could go for colonization. That's perfect. Limitaniae, boom, for the extra loyalty. We grab a governor. Now, the governor I think that will be most useful this game would probably be... Who would be the most useful governor here long term? Reyna, probably. Yeah, Reyna. Reyna would get me three extra gold on that trade route in Salvador de Bahia and solve my loyalty issue. Kind of. Jesus, this city really got tanked, didn't it? Minus 50% from disloyal. Uh, so we have early empire. It would be good to get craftsmanship and state workforce, head towards political philosophy as fast as possible. It's Dido. Nice to meet you. What? Why am I? Oh, end of turn bug. Well, F's in chat for this run. I'm soft locked and now it's cancelling. Thank you. If we reloaded it, it might work. It might work. And I, I got the end of turn bug where the turn never ends. Uh, can't you restart? Can't you save on that and restart? I, I, I could just reload this auto turn, the auto, the auto save, and we should be fine. All right. So I think we settled this one ASAP because this will provide loyalty to Salvador de Bahia, which gives us the best chance of actually surviving in that city. Uh, and then I, I think we just, we just get these extra two settlers that we really want. Um, I will need another governor for over here, but that's definitely my next settlement. All right. Okay, dude. He declared war on me, um, but I don't think he has a way to do anything to me. I don't think he can actually, like... Yeah, I don't think he can actually stop me. So I'll just park this guy in the city. What's the loyalty like here? Minus 0 0.7. Step onto that hill. Eight turns. We got astrology. Boom, boom, boom. We settle on the bananas. Uh, maybe archery? Nah. So in Belim, we've got a few choices. Work in that nice tile. We've got plenty of room. She can embark, so I may not get this city. It's understandable. Uh... Would love to be getting a monument. Is that what I go for? I feel like a granary is necessary when you're settling coastally. 
Otherwise, in eight turns, the city levels up and can't grow anymore. Yeah. I mean, he can bash his head against the city as much as he wants. What's the red marker on the sea? It's part of one of the mods that we're using for this run. Am I getting end of turn bugged again? Oh, this is actually just straight up a crash, I think. We got ourselves a crash to desktop. It happens. Okay. Maybe these mods aren't stable together. Make a choice. Sucretax Oceans or the Arsenal mod. Sucretax Oceans or the Ar Arsenal mod. We'll, we'll give it one more attempt before we make that real choice. But we might have to restart. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Why do you have to be mad? It's okay if we restart. But you know what? I'm going to call that the end of this possible YouTube video as your ears get absolutely blasted. I love you all very much. And I'll see you on the flip side.